Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 4th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today published a little bit a year in review post uh, summarizing some of the malicious emails that he collected in his spam trap. Now, one thing he points out is that the range of sizes of the malicious files is uh, quite large from about a kilobyte all the way up to a couple hundred megabytes. We talk about some of these sort of excessive large malicious files that apparently are attempting to bypass some controls where uh, anti-malware only looks at files up to a particular size. Other interesting findings here is, first of all, a lot of just simple PE files, so standard executables, yes, with uh, different extensions and such, but something that should be pretty easy to detect, but also then a bunch of scripts, office files, PDFs, and the like. So what you typically see in malicious spam. I think uh, one important thing to remember is not to overthink uh, what attackers maybe it attempting with a particular sort of evasion method or what they're trying to accomplish. Remember, attacks don't always have to work. They don't have sort of a 5-9 SLA or something like this. An attacker often will just basically take a shotgun approach where they try different tricks and hope that, well, uh, one of their emails will make it. But I think uh, one lesson here uh, to also remember is that it's not that difficult to really get rid of a large percentage of malicious attachments by just looking for the basics like PE files, like scripts, and uh, well, some of these other odd types like help files and uh, shortcut links. Orange, a large ISP in Europe today suffered an outage for its sp- Spanish subsidiary after their RIPE account was attacked and compromised. This is sort of interesting in the sense that a security feature here with a modern BGP was actually used against them. Traditionally, routing on the internet via BGP has sort of been a big free-for-all where everybody just trusted each other's advertisements and it used to be pretty simple to hijack a particular prefix by basically just sending advertisements claiming that it's yours. One fix that was implemented in recent years was resource public key infrastructure, where actually use cryptographic keys to sign some of these records for a BGP route announcements in order to prove that a particular prefix actually belongs to your autonomous system or AS. Now, the problem with this is that, of course, somehow you have to figure out which key is authentic. And that's where registrars come in. Registrars essentially own the IP address space. And uh, historically, they didn't really keep very good track of who had which particular IP address space. But with RPKI, you can deposit your key with the registrar, and then it can be used to cryptographically verify your BGP announcements. And that uh, prevents a lot of BGP. BGP hijacking unless someone is actually able to break in the account with your registrar and alter your RPKI information, essentially invalidating the keys that you're using for your BGP advertisements, turning them invalid and not trusted. And as a result, of course, you will lose connectivity. Now, the registrars we're talking about here are not your domain registrars for IP address spaces. We have these regional registrars like Aaron here in the US or North America and in this particular case in Europe, RIPE. So the Orange Spain RIPE account was compromised. The attacker then modified their RPKI configuration and as a result, Orange suffered an outage until they were able to gain access to the account and fix the issue. And that's, of course, yet a good reminder to make sure that these infrastructure accounts are properly secured. I'll link to an article here by Bleeping Computer, which did a good sort of summary of it. There wasn't really sort of anything great or so from Orange uh, to link to yet. 
But at this point, I haven't really seen any mention about how the attacker gained access to the account. There was some suspicion that it may have been an info stealer that was installed on some administrator's system. And we got a couple of smaller stories. First of all, a good blog post by a red team pen testing about how to break into Bitwarden password of wallets. Of course, we all use password managers and this is sort of a nice lesson as to what some of the weaknesses are of these password managers that may give an attacker access to your passwords here, specifically a Bitwarden. And then a uh, Two uh, proof of concepts for uh, iOS uh, flaws that are sort of interesting. CVE 2023-41974 and then also for CVE 2023-32434. Uh, the second one in particular is interesting because it uh, has already been exploited. So now we have a public proof of concept available and it does allow sort of full command execution on iOS devices. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks to everybody leaving reviews with your favorite podcast platform and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.